Hi, my name is Mike, and I'm going to show you how you can use a Nitrogen Logic automation controller to create a network serial port server. First, we will look at using a single serial port. You connect a USB serial adapter to the automation controller's USB port. Then you connect a serial device of your choice to the serial adapter. When working with a single serial adapter, the controller remembers its identity by its model name. Now within the Palace Designer Virtual Machine, we load the controller's status page and download the Palace Designer template. We will delete the USB to DMX output object since we want to use this as a serial port and save this as a new file under our Palace Designs directory, allowing us to make changes and save them. Now we create an incoming connection object and tie the port opened output of the serial port to the connect input of the incoming connection so connections are only accepted when the port is available. We also wire up the data ports. Now we will create parameter control objects to allow us to view the status of the port over the network. Now let's give all of our objects meaningful names. We also need to choose an appropriate port for our incoming connection object. Now we export our parameters. We will export the baud rate of the serial port whether the port is opened, whether a client is connected, and the client connection state. Now let's save our work and upload it to the device. With the controller running our serial port server design, we can switch back to its status page and reload. We can see our exported parameters for baud rate and port status. We will set the baud rate to 115200. Now we test our single port serial server. Back on a PC, we open up two copies of the PuTTY terminal emulator software, one of which will connect to our serial port server on port 10,000, the other of which connects to a USB to serial adapter that is plugged into the PC. That serial adapter is connected to the serial port server's serial adapter using a null modem cable. If you download PuTTY, make sure you get it from its official website. Since it's a popular application, lots of sites put up fake downloads that include malware or links to commercial software. The correct site is shown on the screen. So let's open our connections first to our serial port, and also to our server. Switching back to our Palace Designer virtual machine, we can see that the client connected value is now 1, indicating that a client is connected to the serial port server. In order to facilitate our test, we will change some settings on our serial and network terminal interfaces. Turn on local line editing, local echo, and implicit carriage return in every line feed for both terminals. Now if we enter text into one of the terminals, it will appear on the other. So that's how you set up a serial port server with a single serial port on a Nitrogen Logic automation controller. If we unplug our serial port adapter from the automation controller, because we attached the port opened output of the serial port to our network object, the client will be disconnected. 
We can verify this on our controller's status page. The port is no longer opened and the client is no longer connected. If we reattach our serial port adapter to the automation controller through a USB hub, we will see the port open again and a client connection become available. It doesn't matter which port we use. As a final note, to send more commands over the serial port per second, you may want to adjust the update interval in the design settings dialog. The controller processes one chunk of data per logic update cycle, so increasing the update rate allows you to send smaller chunks more often, reducing latency. This doesn't affect total throughput, as with the lower update rate, the data chunks will just be larger. Now we will work with multiple serial ports. We have five USB serial adapters connected to a USB hub. We will connect the USB hub to the controller's USB port. And as before, download the Palace Designer template from the controller's status page. We will also delete all of the DMX adapter objects. Now we connect two of the serial adapters together using a null modem cable. When working with multiple serial adapters, the controller remembers them by where they are connected. Notice that the serial port is identified by path rather than by ID as was the case in the single port setup. So if a serial adapter is moved to a different port on a USB hub, it will not function. However, you can swap the positions of serial adapters and they will continue to work. The serial adapters will assume the identity of the previous adapter in that same port. Now we will arrange the serial port objects on our canvas and create a similar structure to our single port demonstration for each of the serial ports. We also need to remember to assign a unique port for each incoming network connection object. And we need to name all of our objects. Let's save the design. With all of our objects created and connected to each other, now we will export parameters on the network. We click each parameter in the order that we want it to appear on the controller's status page. Let's also set the design to run faster and upload it to the device. With the design running on the controller, we can switch back to the status page and reload to see the parameters for all of our ports. We can unplug a single serial adapter at a time to see which serial adapter corresponds to which port in the design. We watch for the port opened line to go to zero. We can also adjust baud rates from here. Although you can type in any number, only the common rates are supported. If you type in an invalid number, it will default to 38,400 bits per second. We can see the serial port closed and reopened as we change its baud rate. Now we will use PuTTY to connect to the serial ports on the automation controller. Make sure that you choose a raw connection and enter the correct port and host name. We can see that our clients are connected on the controller's status page, thanks to the parameters we exported earlier. Now we verify our connection by sending some data back and forth. If we unplug our USB serial adapters from the controller, 
we will lose our network connection. Since the serial adapters are identified by their connection rather than their model name or serial number, you can actually replace one of the adapters with a different brand of adapter as long as it's connected to the same USB port. Notice that all of the adapters are once again showing that their port is open and they are accepting connections. Thanks to the sophistication of the Nitrogen Logic automation system, we can expand our serial port server to support data traffic monitoring. We do this by adding data length objects to check the length of each packet coming in and out of the serial port. We connect our length objects to the data ports of the connection and serial port and give them suitable names. Next, we add integer accumulators to monitor total traffic and moving average filters to monitor average traffic. Because we are running at 200 samples per second, 200 updates per second, we need to multiply the length of a data packet by 200 in order for our moving average filters to give us the average data rate per second. Let's also give names to all of our objects. It will also be useful to be able to reset the totals, so we will add a boolean value plugin and set its input to momentary. Now we arrange our objects and make our connections. We need parameter control objects to allow us to monitor the moving average. We want our average to work over 200 samples, which in our case is one full second. Now we need to export our parameters. We save and upload to the device. Now we can switch back to the status page and refresh to see our new parameters. Now we open a connection to the serial port using PuTTY. If we paste some data into the terminal, we will see the connection counts updated on our serial port server's status page. To show you that the rate is accurate, we can also just send a few bytes at a time. Since we added a total reset button, we can reset the total counts by entering a 1 here and pressing enter. Thanks for watching this demonstration and tutorial video of the Nitrogen Logic Automation Controller. You can find out more about the Automation Controller on the Nitrogen Logic website at nitrogenlogic.com. You can purchase your own controller by sending an inquiry using the Contact Us page. You can also keep up to date by subscribing to my personal blog at nitrogen.posterous.com.